Tech family, the LG Gram 16 is one of the more magical laptops that I have reviewed. When I look for a laptop for you guys, I try to pick ones that are a joy to use. This means they get the basics right. They have a bright, high quality screen, a comfortable keyboard and trackpad, and they don't get too warm to the touch while using them or have obnoxious fan noise. Plus, while doing all this, they need to be powerful enough to do what you need. Sounds simple, right? Well, most laptops fail miserably at one or more of these. The LG Gram 16 is for the most part a rare exception. What makes it even more magical is how lightweight it is for what you get. It weighs 1.2 kilograms, which is around 2.7 pounds. For a laptop with a large 16 inch screen, that is light, very light. Just to put that in perspective, my Dell XPS 13 Plus, which has a substantially smaller screen, weighs around the same. This makes this device one of the most portable large screen laptops I've ever used. But all is not perfect as you're about to see, which has left me feeling that there is a set of users who are absolutely going to love this laptop and should buy it, and others who should probably pass on it and get something else. By the way, before we get too far into the video, if at the end of this video you like what you watch, make sure you click the like button and that you're subscribed. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these and, as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Back on how lightweight the laptop is, I was worried that there would be a substantial trade-off in rigidity due to the materials used to make it so lightweight, but in everyday use it was sturdy enough. The keyboard deck does have some flex to it, but it really didn't bother me and I'm nitpicky about such things. When the lid was closed, like you would when traveling with a laptop, the outer frame was quite rigid. The middle of the screen though was not. If this worries you, I'd suggest you purchase a rigid sleeve for the laptop like the one that I've linked below. The keyboard is really good, one of the more comfortable keyboards I've used on a laptop. It's funny, I recently said the keyboard on the HP Spectre was the best I've used on any laptop. I feel this one is equivalent, good travel with a satisfying click. It is also backlit and has a number pad. The trackpad is good enough. For the most part, tracking feels natural and I found it accurate. In some obscure movements, like when trying to repeatedly scroll down a page for filming this B-roll, the cursor would occasionally jump to a different location or incorrectly pop up the menu. In everyday use, I didn't notice this issue. But for transparency, for those looking for a completely perfect trackpad, right now this isn't it. The screen is decent. It's a large, 16 inch panel with impressive color accuracy and enough brightness. The panel is matte, non-touch, which means you won't see any reflections. It has the desirable 16 by 10 aspect ratio for seeing a little more content for apps that go down the page. And it has a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels, which results in content looking crisp enough on screen at 188 pixels per inch. In comparison, a standard 13.3 inch laptop with a Full HD 1920x1080 panel would look slightly less crisp at 166 pixels per inch. However, this panel is not as sharp as the MacBook Pro 16's which hits 254 pixels per inch. This all sounds good, but I do want to call something important out. The amount of content you can comfortably see on screen without needing to squint is a result of many factors. The screen's brightness, size and pixel density, i.e. how sharp things look on screen. Although this panel is physically large, it isn't the brightest and it doesn't have the best pixel density. Because of this, I couldn't run the laptop at 125% window scaling, which is what I would need to do to see a lot of content on screen. I found I was squinting when doing that. I had to run the laptop on the default 150% window scaling, where everything looked very large on screen, and I didn't see enough content to warrant such a large laptop. On my graph, you can see the substantial difference in the number of rows of Excel I was able to see at these two scaling settings. This is the first laptop I felt compelled to run a custom scaling setting on so I could use a percentage in between these two. Even Windows warns you against doing this as some applications may not scale correctly. Moral of the story, I feel this panel needs to be brighter so you can make the most of its large screen size, otherwise why bother? I can see this much content comfortably on a smaller, more portable 14 inch laptop. Port situation is good, with two USB-C ports that both support charging and are Thunderbolt. Two USB-A ports for backwards compatibility which are both the fast 10 gigabit variety, an HDMI 2.0 port, a headphone mic combo jack and a micro SD card reader. My only nit is that both charging capable ports are on the left side, so if your outlet is on the right, you will need to run the charging cable around the back. Sound is okay, it gets loud enough which is good, but the speakers don't have the power nor the quality of a MacBook's. 
Sound quality is a little muddy and there isn't an immersive sound stage which is a pity as this is a large laptop and you have the space to play speakers to create such an effect. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds in excellent lighting conditions. It's a bit disappointing. Windows Hello facial recognition worked well and got me logged in fast. Let's talk performance. For my performance tests, I tried both the normal and high fan speed settings, which can be configured in the LG Smart Assistant app. I used Windows Balanced Performance Mode with a normal fan setting and High Performance Mode with a high fan setting. As you can see from Geekbench, which tests a variety of common short running tasks, this laptop substantially underperforms the Dell XPS 13 with the same CPU, both in single and multi-core. That being said, it did still perform better than my budget 16-inch laptop pick, the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 with its Ryzen 6-core CPU. Switching to Cinebench, which tests the laptop's processor when under full load, things get worse. It now significantly underperforms the Dell and even underperforms the 6-core Ryzen processor I mentioned earlier in multi-core. When I ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes for a torture test, performance dropped further. You can see that the amount of power fed to the processor dropped significantly during this test and so did the gigahertz that the processor runs at. This is likely because the laptop can't effectively cool the Intel P-series processor inside. Funnily enough, when we look at the actual CPU core temperatures during this test, you can see that LG do not allow their processor to hit 100 degrees Celsius like others do. If LG did, we would likely see more performance. That being said, if you want a laptop that doesn't run the processor at the max 100 degrees Celsius, this may be the one. When it comes to the temperatures you'd feel when using the laptop during performance tasks, it's very competitive on balance mode with the normal fan profile. It doesn't feel hot. In performance mode though, it can feel warm on the underside. Fan noise is another story. On the normal fan mode, you will hear the fan in a quiet room. On high, it becomes very noticeable, more akin to a gaming laptop. Moral of the story, do not buy this laptop if you plan to do anything intensive. So let's talk about how the laptop performs in casual use like browsing the web, working on office documents, etc. If you run the laptop on normal fan speed, as mentioned, you will hear fans going in a quiet room. It's not high pitched, but you constantly will hear the whir. I then tried running the laptop on the no noise mode, which was silent to my ears, but unfortunately the laptop's performance was heavily throttled to achieve this. I measured the CPU being throttled down to a completely unusable 400 megahertz. Everything quickly became extremely laggy on that setting. In my mind, that setting should not even be offered on this laptop. I ended up running it on the low cooling mode, when in a silent room that is. In this mode, the fans were still a little audible, but it was bearable. In this mode, the laptop certainly wasn't the snappiest I've used, but it was fast enough for those casual tasks. During this time, the laptop's keyboard deck and the underside of it remained very comfortable to the touch. They didn't feel warm at all. When running on battery, performance didn't drop at all on balance mode and only dropped a little on best performance mode. To test battery life, I lowered the screen's brightness to 200 nits, set it to best battery life settings, and then played a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. At the end, I recorded 60% battery remaining, which is really good and should give you around 10 hours in a similar use case. Finally, let's talk pricing. At the time of filming, the list price for the model that I have with one terabyte of storage was $1,700 US dollars, but I caught it on sale at $1,300. In fact, if you go for the 256 gig model, I've seen it going for a crazy low $1,000. Please, don't buy this laptop at the list price. It doesn't perform well enough for a laptop in that price range. And as mentioned, due to the screen's lack of brightness, you can't really take advantage of the laptop's large 16 inch display to see more content on the screen. At the sale price though of $1,300, it's a very strong option for a certain type of user. For example, my mother would love this laptop. She would like the fact that things look large on screen. Plus, because she just uses the laptop to respond to emails and work on office documents, she wouldn't care about the lack of performance. And for her, the fact that this laptop is super lightweight, has a comfortable keyboard and trackpad and doesn't get warm to the touch while using it, I'm sure would have her pick it over other laptops. Rounding out this review, there is a portable external 16 inch monitor that is perfectly matched for this laptop called the LG Gram Plus View. 
as that monitor is pretty much identical to the display in this laptop, it becomes a very nice addition to give you more usable screen space. Most external monitors you'd use with a laptop aren't the same screen, i.e. one is matte and the other is glossy, or one is OLED and very vibrant and the other isn't. So it can feel disjointing looking at one screen than the other. That is not the case here, it feels seamless going from one to the other. This external monitor substantially improves how productive you can be on this laptop, making it super easy to do things like comparing two documents together. And I'd strongly recommend you consider buying it if you buy this laptop. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. If you'd like to see early looks at hot new tech or are interested in my life outside of YouTube, make sure to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, links below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.